Welcome dear audience students and scholars here I am Dr. Amjad Ali in this video we are going to discuss about aggregate demand building the IS and LM model and introduction dear scholars once John Maynard Keynes said that I shall argue that the postulates of the classical theory are applicable to a special case only and not to the general case moreover the characteristics of the special case assumed by the classical theory happen not to be those of this economic society in which we actually live with the result that its teaching is misleading and mysterious if we attempt to apply it uh, to the fact of experience the scholars of all uh, the economic fluctuation in the world history the one that stands out as particularly large painful and intellectually significant is the great depression of 1930s during this time, the United States and many other countries experienced massive unemployment and greatly reduced incomes. In the worst years, 1933, one-fourth of the U.S. labor force was unemployed and real GDP was 30% below its uh, 1929 level. This devastating episode caused by uh, many economists to question the validity of classical theory. Classical theory seems incapable of explaining the depression according to classical theory. National income s depends on factor supplies and the available technology, neither of which changed substantially from uh, 1929 to 1933. After the onset of the depression, many economists believed that a new model was needed to explain such a large and sudden economic downturn and to suggest government policies that might reduce the economic hardships so many people faced during that period. Introduction in 1936, the British economist John Maynard Keynes revolutionized economics with his uh, book, The Journal Theory of Employment, Interest and Money. Keynes uh, proposed a new way to analyze the economy which he presented as an alternative to classical theory. His vision of how the economy works quickly became a center of controversy, yet uh, as economists debated the general theory, a new understanding of economic fluctuations gradually developed. Keynes proposed that low aggregate demand is responsible for low income and high unemployment that characterize uh, economic downturn. He criticized classical theory for assuming that aggregate supply alone, uh, capital, labor and technology determines national income. Economists today reconcile these two views uh, with the model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply. In the long run, prices are flexible and aggregate supply determines income. But in the short run, prices are sticky, so changes in aggregate demand influence income. In 2008 and 2009, as the United States and Europe descended into a recession, the Keynesian theory of the business cycle was often in the news. Policymakers around the world debated how best to increase aggregate demand and put their economies on the road to recovery. In our previous chapter and now we continue our study of economic fluctuations by looking more closely at aggregate demand. Our goal is to identify the variables that shift the aggregate demand curve causing fluctuations in national income. We also examine more fully the tools policymaker can use to influence the aggregate demand. In our previous video, we drive the aggregate demand curve from the quantity theory of money and we showed that monetary policy can shift the aggregate demand curve. In this video, uh, we see that the government can influence the aggregate demand with both monetary and 
fiscal policy. IS and LM model. The model of aggregate demand is also called the IS and LM model is the leading interpretation of Keynes theory. The goal of the model is to show uh, what determines national income for a given price level. There are two ways to interpret this exercise. We can view the IS and LM model as showing what causes income to change in the short run when price level is fixed because all prices are sticky. Or we can view the model as showing what causes the aggregate demand curve to shift. These two interpretations of the models are equivalent. So let's see a graphical presentation. Shift in aggregate demand. We have uh, income output y on x axis and we have price level p on y axis and we have short run aggregate supply curve here. We have aggregate demand 81 and we have the fixed price level here. So we know that the intersection of the aggregate demand and supply curve will decide the level of national income that is y1. So by raising the aggregate demand we can shift the aggregate demand curve to rightward from 81 to 82. So this shift in aggregate demand will raise the national income from Y1 to Y2. And again, we by raising the aggregate demand, our aggregate demand curve will shift from 82 to 83. And that raised aggregate demand will raise the national income from Y2 2 to Y3. So for a given price level national income fluctuates because shifts in aggregate demand curve uh, the IS and LM model takes the price level as a given and shows what causes income to change. The model therefore shows what causes aggregate demand to shift. So this figure shows that in the short run when price level is fixed Shifts in aggregate demand curve lead to changes in the equilibrium of national income as we have seen here Y1, Y2, Y3 these uh, changes in national income uh, are because of shifts in aggregate demand. So let's define the IS curve and LM curve. The two parts of the IS and LM model are not surprisingly the IS curve and the LM curve. IS stands for the investment and a saving and the IS curve represents uh, what's going on in the market for goods and services. So normally we call the IS uh, model or IS curve for the real sector. And the LM stands for the liquidity and uh, money and the IM LM curve represents uh, what's happening uh, to the supply and demand for money. So normally we call the LM curve for the monetary sector. So IS and LM stand for the real sector and LM stand for the monetary sector. So because the interest rate influences both investment and money demand it is the variable that links the two halves of the IS and LM model. The model shows uh, how intersections between the goods and money market determine the position and slope of the aggregate demand curve and therefore the level of national income in the short run. So this is all about the aggregate demand building the IS and LM model. So uh, here we are only presenting the introduction of this. So see you with another video. Ciao.